Welcome everyone to the talks on quantum cybersecurity. Um, my name is Carlos Pedro Gonçalves. I'm a, an associate professor at Lusophone University of Humanities and Technologies and a researcher in, on quantum technologies, machine learning, strategic studies, and intelligence and security studies. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Xi Quantum for uh, inviting me to perform these talks in lecture uh, uh, series format. Uh, and for fostering diversity and inclusion in technology and in quantum technologies in particular. Um, we need more women war working uh, not only in technology, but also in quantum technologies. Um, the current talks, which were recorded in lecture series format, have a direct link to She Quantum's mission to inspire and get women involved in quantum technologies. And we'll see, uh, 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 we'll address this link in the present uh, and first talk. Um, this first talk, uh, which is, foc is focused on the present day and the main current context of cybersecurity. Uh, each talk in, in, in lecture format will have about 30 minutes length. Uh, uh, the first talk, which is focused on present day, the second talk is focused on the midterm of, cy of cybersecurity and quantum cybersecurity. Uh, this, the, um, the second talk is focused on quantum cybersecurity in a classical environment. Uh, we'll see uh, in, in short while uh, what this means. Uh, and the third talk is mid to long term, that is quantum cybersecurity in a quantum environment. So for this first talk, in terms of summary, which is, this is a, an introductory talk, not only to the, the, the whole series, um, uh, uh, we'll, uh, but we'll address a few points that, uh, that uh, uh, provide the, um, the main context for what are the main co current concerns in cybersecurity? Cybersecurity has transformed uh, throughout time as the cyber threats have evolved. Uh, and we'll establish a few points and, and concepts that are needed in the subsequent series. So we'll address uh, the gender gap in cybersecurity, which is a, a great cause for concern currently. Um, We'll also address the link to this, the importance of diversity and inclusion in cybersecurity and why it matters in terms of defense against cyber threats. We'll look at the current stage and one of the main concerns that is present in the, within the community on quantum, on cybersecurity, which is the cyber psychological operations revolution. Uh, this is linked to hybrid threats, and we'll explain what hybrid threats are, uh, and to intelligence warfare, which we'll also address. Um, and this is the this characterizes not only the uh, current stage of development of cyber threats, but also uh, uh, is demanding a reflection on the part of the community uh, around cyberspace, uh, cyber threats, and uh, the di direction in terms of a reflection and, and conceptual debate within cybersecurity, as well as uh, 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 within the, in, uh, the level of innovation needed uh, within cybersecurity need uh, for uh, facing these types of threats. And this, this is produced uh, essentially, this is being highly enhanced, these psyops uh, or cyber psychological operations are being highly enhanced by machine, le by machine learning, AI, and uh, social media. So uh, this is one point which will uh, uh, make, uh, which the quantum will impact and will address the quantum revolution, which will impact, impact transversely uh, the various uh, dimensions of cybersecurity, including uh, this issue of cyber psychological operations. Um, we'll address in this first talk the quantum revolution and main concepts from strategy and intelligence that will be needed uh, in the subsequent talks. The second talk will focus solely, while this first talk will uh, will address cybersecurity in general, and then how the quantum uh, make a transition to how the quantum revolution, uh, the, the the predictably coming quantum revolution, will impact cybersecurity in its current stage. The second talk will focus solely on quantum cybersecurity, but quantum cybersecurity in a classical environment. That is how quantum computing and quantum hacking tools and also quantum cybersecurity solutions 
uh, will play out in a classical communications and internet framework. So classical cyberspace infrastructure. Uh, we'll review many of the research directions in the field of quantum cybersecurity addressing this point, including post-quantum cryptography, the quantum cybersecurity revolution, which is introduced in this first talk, will be recovered in the second talk and, and uh, addressed in a great detail. Um, we'll look at quantum machine learning and the, its implications for classical cybersecurity, including AI hackers and quantum AI hackers. Also, we'll look at quantum cyber psychological operations, so how uh, the quantum will impact this uh, major concern that is currently facing uh, cybersecurity experts, which constitute uh, cyber psychological operations. In the second talk, We'll look at the quantum cybersecurity in a uh, in the third talk. We'll look at the quantum cybersecurity in a quantum environment. So this second was for the classical environment. The third um, and last talk and lecture. So it's about thirty minutes each. Uh, the the last talk is on uh, quantum cybersecurity in a quantum environment. So here we'll we'll deal with quantum cyberspace quantum internet uh, uh, and the stages of development, uh, predictable stages of development of a quantum internet. We'll, uh, um, and we'll look at quantum key distribution, which is quantum cryptography. This, 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 this is one of the research directions within quantum cybersecurity. Um, we'll look at, uh, and we'll, we'll see different authors that, and the types of research that is being done here. We'll look at also uh, uh, eavesdropping schemes and defense against eavesdroppers. Um, uh, also disrupting quantum communications, that is how to hack quantum communications, not to listen in, to spy on them, which is the eavesdropping problem uh, within quantum cybersecurity. But this disruption of quantum communications is another type of quantum hacking, that is hacking quantum communications and a quantum internet to disrupt them, to disrupt network, quantum computation, and quantum communications. And it is it is possible to disrupt quantum communications. Um, this is the field of quantum malware and so on. Um, we'll also take a, a closer look at the quantum internet. And uh, in this regard, uh, we'll, uh, 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 we'll reflect on what a quantum memory means, uh, on storing qubits, uh, and also on uh, the possibility of building quantum databases that store data in qubits, uh, that is in superpositions between zero and zeros and ones. Uh, we'll uh, look at possible solutions for quantum databases, including the quantum blockchain. Um, and we'll also look at uh, quantum crypto communities and resilience against quantum cyber psychological operations. So how to, uh, how to draw on the, the the quantum technology the same quantum technologies that uh, uh, will lead to a next level of cyber threats also lead to possible solutions against these cyber threats and this is a major point that will uh, we we will address both in the second talk and in the third talk in the case of third talk we'll talk about resilience um uh, governance and how the quantum will may support a sustainable resilient Governance uh, that uh, may 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 um, as a solution against quantum cyber psychological operations and psyops in general also they, it may help also on classical psyops. So we'll look first in this talk at women in cybersecurity, and this is a major issue: um, the human resources dimension. Um, of the different fields of application and research in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and the gender gap is, is large in science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics. Uh, the the cybersecurity is one in which the gender gap has been traditionally high, and uh, as we'll argue, uh, one in which such a gap can be very uh, can be most disruptive. It's highly disruptive the presence of this gap, and we'll see why. 
So for women specifically, this is um, a, an interview done by Dinah Davids, who created the Code Like a Girl initiative. Uh, she's a woman working in technology and working specifically in cybersecurity. This is an interview uh, uh, that she she gave on the on behalf of the International Women's Day, two thousand and twenty one. And she said that for women specifically, historically, cybersecurity in general is only 10% female. This means that it's 90% male. And this is a high, a very high gender gap. And while uh, she, uh, she adds, while we aren't seeing a dramatic shift in the percentage of women in cybersecurity in general, we are seeing an increase uh, in women for entry level positions, which bodes well for change in the longer term. The problem here is that longer term uh, is problematic. So we we needed a, a, a dramatic shift in uh, in uh, we need a dramatic shift um, in, uh, in 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 to reduce this gender gap quickly. Why? So gender and cultural diversity in cybersecurity is fundamental, and this is due to four specific reasons. I call them ITGC. Innovation, talent, governance, and content. So these four points uh, are fundamental, and uh, and uh, and diversity is is fundamental on these four points. And we need to reduce the gender gap because of this. So, first of all, innovation on the side of cyber threats is exponential, and it's empower increasingly empowering of non-state actors and people that do not need to have um, uh, uh, highly sophisticated skills, uh, they now have uh, the ability to, uh, to automate many of the hacking processes. Um, and uh, the problem is that uh, as AI and machine learning uh, expands exponentially, it will be exponentially cheaper for people to hack systems using automated tools. So innovation in hacking is uh, uh, is fast, is uh, and is is highly disruptive and is changing in profile. You'll see this in, in a few seconds. So, but uh, the um, the innovation regarding so if innovation in the on the threat side is exponential, we need to cover that innovation on the threat side by an innovation on the defense side, on the countering of cyber threat side. But without diversity, uh, innovation uh, cannot uh, is 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 hindered. So diversity of life experiences, of cultures, of gender, of ethnicities, uh, diversity fosters uh, creative thinking, fosters thinking outside the box and innovative solutions. So diversity fosters technical and technological innovation, and we need technological innovation, fast paced into uh, technological innovation to face the current uh, technological innovation in cyber threats. So to face these cyber threats, we need technological solutions uh, that are innovative and that innovate, and we need an exponentially innovating uh, 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 cybersecurity uh, uh, field. So, yeah, and this is one of the, the first reasons why we need more women and we need more diversity within cybersecurity. The second regards talent, and it's linked also to innovation. If part of the population is excluded due to gender, country of origin, ethnicity biases, then talent is being wasted and talent is critical in the rapid pace of transformation in cybersecurity. So we need to, uh, uh, companies need to hire women in cybersecurity, so, and we, they need to reduce this gap and they need to, a cre a create a basis of diversity, cultural diversity, uh, ethnic diversity, and gender diversity within uh, uh, corporations and within uh, and organizations in general within the cybersecurity field. So, within the cybersecurity field, we need to foster this diversity. Um, there's also another side to to this point, which is governance. And cybersecurity currently is not just about the technical side. And we'll see this uh, in more detail uh, next. It's also about governance and the fostering of a security culture as a, a strategic organizational response. 
but to foster a security culture as um, uh, an organizational response on cyber threats, on hybrid threats as well. We'll see uh, 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 in this talk what hybrid threats mean. Um, uh, this demands organizational change and demands diversity. Uh, also, cyber, current cybersecurity threats uh, thrive on on uh, uh, bad governance and diversity fosters better governance, especially in unstable, dynamical and complex contexts. So we need greater diversity in governance as well in order to face current cyber threats. This is another dimension. Content. Cybersecurity is not just about protecting digital assets and systems currently. So while in the past the great focus was on uh, preventing hackers from breaching the system and stealing data, protecting digital assets and systems, preventing fr them from attacking systems and communications with distributed denial of service. There's a new dimension to cybersecurity that needs to be taken into account, and it is revolutionizing cybersecurity as a new uh, because uh, because it's, it it leads to a, a concept from a transition from a concept of cyber dominance, especially in state level cybersecurity, to an issue of information dominance. So cyber dominance in terms of protecting systems and having good uh, tools to 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 protect data and databases and prevent hackers from breaching. Um, this is one side that is still present today, but we, we now have this new dimension within cybersecurity, which is based on content, content dispersal, leaks, strategic leaks, and manipulated content. So this is the field of cyber psychological operations. And cyber psychological operations um, is about online content manipulation including fake content dispersal and social media attacks that can target any country, company, organization, citizens, or even a single individual, for instance, online bullying. And this was enabled, this revolution in, in, in cybersecurity, which is the cyber psychological operations uh, revolution, was enabled by the fourth industrial revolution, AI, machine learning, and social media. Strongly linked to this was the social media revolution. So uh, we need diversity and gender gap reduction urgently in cybersecurity because diversity in cybersecurity and the reduction of the gender gap is key to deal with the current PSYOPs revolution. So the PSYOPs revolution, as said, was enabled by the fourth industrial revolution. It's enhanced by machine learning, uh, by social media, um, straw bots, deep fakes, including deep learning enabled fake videos and pictures that disperse fake contents online, um, and that can target companies, that can target states, go governance, uh, and this can be highly disruptive. In, in, in extremist uh, 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 psyops can uh, bring down governments. So this is uh, very, very worrisome and, an important point about the, the current stage, and it's a content revolution because because it's it it it, does, it weaponizes cyberspace with content to manipulate people's opinions, to ma manipulate how people think, how people choose, and um, uh, and to mobilize actions against specific targets using cyberspace, in particularly uh, social media. So uh, this also uh, depends on big data processing, and it's it characterizes uh, one of the major concerns currently facing cybersecurity experts, uh, and uh, they um, and the debates on quantum on, on cybersecurity in general. So these cyber psychological operations are linked to hybrid warfare and hybrid threats. And it's not just state actors ca that can implement them and that are implementing them. Terrorist groups, uh, non-state affiliated, um, uh, non-state actors uh, and uh, can can mobilize and use cyberspace to, to, to disrupt a, a state's governance, to attack companies, uh, even to attack single individuals. And this is linked to hybrid operations, which can be defined as the use of military and non-military means to achieve one's strategic goals. This is the classical definition 
of hybrid operations. It means that rather than open battle, one may use intelligence activities, subterfuge and subversion in order to gain an advantage over the adversary. And while in the past it was strongly linked to state um, state operation, this can be linked and state sponsored activities uh, uh, can use these operations. Uh, we now have an in, a high enhancement of the ability uh, for disruption of non-state individuals, non-state groups, non-state sponsors that are not being supported by any state, but that operate on using cyberspace to implement these operations. And cyber psychological operations are, are one of the main hybrid threats currently facing uh, states' governments. Um, quantum technologies will impact uh, this, uh, this area. We'll see this in greater detail about PSYOPs, but uh, quantum technologies and cybersecurity. So quantum technologies are poised to radically impact cybersecurity. And this is the next revolution. While we, now, we are now facing the cyber psychological operations revolution, in, uh, uh, in a few years, we'll be facing the quantum technological revolution in cybersecurity. So they are poised to radically impact cybersecurity and we are nearing a quantum cybersecurity revolution. And this impacts uh, all, all dimensions of cybersecurity, including the PSYOPs revolution, which will be accelerated by quantum technologies. We'll look at this in the next uh, uh, talk and lecture. So uh, quantum hacking tools is one of the, one of the issues where uh, quantum technologies uh, will uh, predictably impact using quantum technologies for intrusion, for cyber attacks and for cyber psychological operations. This draws upon quantum computing, quantum cryptography and quantum machine learning. Also the defense against these types of operations will rely on quantum computing, quantum cryptography and quantum machine learning, as well as quantum internet solutions in the case of PSYOPs, namely quantum blockchain, quantum crypto communities that may help fight against these types of operations. Um, quantum communications at the level of quantum com communications will uh, uh, one of the dimensions is as quantum communications develop, we'll see the development also of hacking, quantum hacking of quantum communications and quantum hacking of quantum network computation. And quantum hacking has a specific profile and different. Uh, th there are specific uh, uh, dimensions to and dynamics to quantum hacking that differ from classical hacking. We'll see this in the third uh, talk. So uh, regarding your quantum internet, which uh, is where we are um, leading to, we already have cloud-based access to quantum computing resources. An example is IBM's quantum experience. Um, which, uh, for instance, I use regularly. I've used it in the past in my in my research in uh, um, in neural networks, where uh, quantum neural networks, where which were simulated using uh, uh, IBM's quantum computers and simulating actually quantum neural networks uh, working on actual quantum computers. Uh, which have an architecture that is network based and can simulate well quantum neural networks. And now uh, 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 my most recent research has used precisely access to this IBM quantum experience uh, platform to simulate uh, cyber attacks and quantum malware on uh, quantum communications protocols, including in and in particular on the super dense coding protocol. We'll talk a little about this in the third uh, talk uh, or in lecture. Uh, we'll begin by having, uh, but about the quantum internet. So now we have this cloud-based access where people can from their laptops access quantum computing resources. Um, uh, the second level is a, a merge between, a, a mix between classical and quantum internet. So this is the, the hybrid classical quantum uh, uh, network. The third level of a quantum internet is a fully quantum internet. So where we have uh, quantum communications and a quantum internet as the infrastructure. And there are ways to disrupt quantum communications and, the, and a quantum internet, both the hybrid mix and the fully quantum 
uh, 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 level. So we need uh, uh, cybersecurity research, both in how these attacks can take place and also how to prevent these attacks, including quantum cyber forensics as new research fields. And this is, this is uncharted territory where any researcher can produce results that are important, that have impact, practical impact, and where all uh, and, and where much of uh, quantum computing, quantum communications uh, enters into this uh, uh, the, the, this research. It's um, so this quantum cybersecurity revolution, both in terms of research and in terms of uh, uh, the coming technologies. Uh, to fully understand this quantum cybersecurity revolution, we need to first understand the nature of the new strategic environment, which is, is where the quantum will uh, will come and will impact. Um, and the type of conceptual framework that comes from intelligence and security studies. So cybersecurity is currently and increasingly more interdisciplinary, which is a point that comes uh, uh, right from what we, we just saw, especially in the PSYOPs uh, side where even cultural anthropology, digital, cyberspace anthropology, cyberspace studies are uh, important uh, and uh, have something to, to add. So the con contribution within cybersecurity is not just from one field, technical field, it's from different fields. And in quantum cybersecurity, we also have that. Um, it is not just about the tools, methods, and techniques. We need to understand concepts from different disciplinary areas, including strategic studies, as well as intelligence studies as critical fields to uh, fully address cybersecurity. So when we deal with quantum cybersecurity, we have uh, um, uh, this direct dialogue between quantum computer science, uh, which includes also quantum information and communications and quantum network computation, quantum AI, machine learning, and so on. Um, we have the dialogue between that and intelligence and security studies and strategic studies. And this the interdisciplinary dialogue is fundamental. And it's important to know some concepts from these two areas, strategic studies and intelligence and security studies to better address quantum uh, cybersecurity. So reviewing some of the a quick, a quick review of these concepts, uh, strategic studies deals with the study of strategy um, uh, uh, and uh, in its various uh, uh, contexts. And strategy comes from the Greek uh, and uh, uh, in its etymological root, it denotes uh, leadership, uh, the word strategy it comes from the Greek and this etymological uh, root denotes leadership of military forces. So it comes from stratos, army plus ago, I lead, I conduct. Uh, so the concept has been expanded beyond the military setting um, to denote long-term planning and leadership. Strategy is the way to achieve our main objectives. It can be defined as a way to achieve our main objectives, so-called strategic objectives. And it involves a choice among alternative paths. So, uh, there are different paths that may allow us to achieve our objectives, and we need to choose uh, one of these paths, which implies uh, a process of deliberation, of the, the application of judgment, uh, uh, where we, we select one alternative among various alternatives. So, but uh, it's, it's also strongly linked to long-term planning. A tactics, the tactics uh, comes uh, also from the Greek taktikos, the word tactics, and it means fit for ordering, uh, and and it is linked to uh, um, to order, to an arrangement. So uh, the tactical level is uh, linked to combinatory, a combinatory of means and ways to fulfill the strategy, combinatory of manpower. So of human resources, of technical resources, technological uh, um, uh, technologies, tools, all that financial resources and so on. So uh, for a same strategy, well, from, for same strategic objectives, there may be different strategies that fulfill them and we need to choose one. For a same strategy, there may be different, there are different tactics uh, uh, that different combinatory of means uh, and ways that allow us to uh, fulfill that strategy. 
So uh, the tactical level establishes this link between the strategy and the operational level, uh, where we are implementing both the tactics and the strategy. The tactics is more fluid and the operations is uh, needs to adapt to, to changing conditions. So in the context of strategy, the strategy is more set. In the content in the context of strategy, intelligence, which is another concept, can be defined as any type of activity that gathers information and produces knowledge that is necessary for strategic decision making, and this is strategic intelligence, tactical decision making, and this is tactical intelligence, or in real time to the implementation of operations as they are taking place, and this is operational intelligence. And it's important to stress that this is not just about defense and security, that is states intelligence and states intelligence agencies, which develop intelligence activities. It's also uh, present in corporations, for instance, business intelligence, competitive intelligence. And this needs to be distinguished from spying. Spying is one way uh, to gather information. So, but if we, for instance, in a, in a, if you look at corporate context, business intelligence is legal. Uh, uh, spying, which is uh, uh, one way to gather intelligence, leads uh, in the corporate context leads to industrial espionage, which is illegal. Uh, so that that is not legal uh, industrial espionage, but uh, business intelligence uh, is legal. So what is business intelligence? So any activity that companies develop to gather information and produce knowledge necessary for decisions for making decisions. And this includes market studies, interviews with clients, with suppliers, and so on. So this uh, uh, reading financial reports, economic reports, so daily news, this is all, uh, 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 these are all activities uh, that uh, gather information and produce the knowledge needed for decision making. So for an informed decision making, we gather information that is an intelligence activity. So this is intelligence. Now the PSYOPs revolution on the, on the cybersecurity side, PSYOPs revolution characterizes, uh, has introduced a new strategic environment, uh, which is being highly debated within cybersecurity. And uh, one of the perceptions about cybersecurity and cyber defense was that uh, cyberspace was looked especially within the defense community, as a warfare domain. Uh, but um, the issue uh, is whether cyber, uh, there's a debate whether cyberspace is now mostly an intelligence or a warfare domain. Uh, but we are seeing, and the community is seeing increasingly, that there is no opposition, there is no either or relation. So cyberspace is currently both an intelligence and warfare domain, and they reinforce each other. And this leads to the issue of intelligence warfare so, or cyber intelligence warfare, which characterizes the current strategic environment for cybersecurity and not just state sponsored uh, operations here. Uh, so uh, cyber, uh, uh, cyber intelligence warfare. So this comes from intelligence warfare is the use of intelligence activities as a way to conduct hybrid operations, which we already saw um, uh, 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 earlier. Uh, 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 the definition. So uh, these hybrid operations include disinformation, strategic leaks, uh, psychological operations, uh, and strategic disruption that is using intelligence activities to disrupt targets. Okay. Uh, but in the what is different now, this is old intelligence warfare, um, but what is new now is, and we'll see that in a second, uh, what is new is this, the, uh, while the principles remain, main principles remain, uh, what is new and uh, what is uh, is becoming increasingly disruptive is the, cyber, the use of cyberspace to conduct this intelligence warfare. And this is what uh, the PSYOPs revolution brought into the, the, the forefront, uh, which is the ability of using cyberspace for disinformation, for viral the uh, spread of leaks, true information and false mixed with false, 
psych and to conduct psychological operations using cyberspace, which is which highly enhances these operations. So these are the cyber psychological operations that we already talked about. And use of cyberspace for strategic disruption and as well, cyber attacks to disrupt information and communications technologies that can have effects even in supply chains. And we saw that uh, 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 recently uh, with uh, an attack on uh, on uh, that that uh, was uh, on a company that uh, that produced meat that it, it could uh, disrupt the supply chain of uh, for 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 meat in the us and uh, canada and uh, also australia so um this uh, it can it can disrupt supply chains uh, and and uh, a cyber attack for instance on a nuclear power plant plant that could produce potentially produce a nuclear meltdown if if the, the weapon was used like that so this cyber attacks on critical infrastructures to disrupt them and the web war one estonia's web war, uh, so-called web war one uh, which were denial of service attacks that completely disrupted the the the, the cyberspace links were, uh, were is a good example of this to disrupt cyber physical systems now with the internet of things we have the internet of connected devices so cyber physical systems and we can uh, uh, disrupt these systems or use these systems even to attack targets this is the strategic disruption so this is not new in terms of uh, of, of of concepts and methods but is uh, uh, in, in terms of principles and general methods, but it, the, the cyberspace and AI machine learning provide new tools for this. And the quantum is poised to transform this radically. So intelligence warfare, its strategic, tactical and operational framework is hybrid. It's not new, for instance, the Japanese classics on intelligence, especially the 17th century main classic Bansen Shukai by Fujibayashi Yasutake, uh, which is highly operative today. Uh, for for cyber intelligence warfare um of this uh, uh, manual i'll use two uh, concepts that are particularly useful in systematizing cyber operations currently um and and cyber threats uh, this is yonin and inin yo is yang in is in yin yin and yang is the is the the um, the uh, it's the Japanese uh, pronunciation of yin and yang. It comes from a uh, 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 Taoist uh, philosophical influence in strategic thinking, and in this case, in intelligence thinking, uh, uh, 17th century uh, Japan. Um, and yonin involved uh, the concept of yonin uh, for in 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 Japan's uh, uh, intelligence warfare involved the use of disguises and the building of undercover networks of operatives used to obtain strategic intelligence and to disrupt the target. Uh, for instance, including spreading of fake rumors. So fake rumor spreading is not just a present uh, uh, concern. It was also present in the past, um, uh, so to speak. Uh, uh, in the Currently, it's uh, it's enhanced by cyberspace machine learning and so on. And with quantum machine learning, it will be further enhanced. In in uh, it's infiltration using stealth to break into a castle or an enemy camp to obtain strategic or tactical intelligence and to disrupt the target. For instance, setting fires. So we now have cyber yoning, that is the use of fake uh, social media accounts and so on, and cyber inin. Um, uh, being used, uh, which is the traditional hacker that uh, penetrates the system to disrupt, steal information, and so on. So this this cyber yawning and cyber inning systematizes well the 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 the, the dimensions of uh, current cyber security and cyber threats and the cyber threat environment. So this finishes. The, the the few concepts that we need from intelligence and strategic studies now we'll go to the quant specifically quantum problems how quantum technologies are set to disrupt this so thank you for now and goodbye for now